Hi everyone, this is Top3D Shop, and in this video, we will tell you about the new high-end 3D printer from the Chinese company Creality, K1 Max. Creality 3D has been in business since 2014, producing a fairly diverse range of 3D printing equipment, mainly for the hobbyist segment. In the early years of development, it gained its popularity with products such as Ender 3 and CR10. Today, the company's production capacity allows it to produce FDM and resin 3D printers, industrial 3D printers, electronics for their control, 3D scanners, and consumables for printing. During these nine years, the company has earned trust due to the quality of its products as well as some interesting innovations. Recently, we reviewed a compact and fast 3D printer from Creality's new series, K1. We recommend you watch that video, and today we're going to talk about its more advanced Max version. Creality K1 is a brand new line of 3D printers. It is characterized by high printing speed and equipped with various modern features such as automatic bed leveling, additional cooling of the build area, and improved air circulation in the chamber. The MAX model also includes such innovations as LiDAR analyzing the quality of the first layer, as well as a camera that can detect problems during printing, or even a foreign object on the platform, which will immediately stop printing. But as always, let's start our review with the supply package. Despite the printer's impressive build volume, the package is still small, which indicates the compactness of the device. Everything inside is packed securely with foam, with the contents neatly organized in boxes. Importantly, the printer comes fully assembled. In contrast to the standard model, the package of the Max version is richer, in addition to all the same tools for maintenance and operation, as well as extra elements for the final assembly. They added a special lubricant for the guides, a 1kg spool of Hyper PLA, in contrast to 200g for K1, and a spare hot end. It is the same for Max but with a different nozzle, a copper one with a hardened steel tip. It probably won't last long with composite since the heating zone is still prone to wear, but the manufacturer leaves the possibility to change the nozzle for the volcano hot end. The thread is the same, only the tip of the nozzle is shorter by 2mm. And since the print head movement along Z is controlled by load sensors, there's no need to adjust anything after the replacement. The maximum temperature of the hot end is increased from 300 to 320 degrees Celsius. The design of K1 Max is based on printers of the Chinese company Bamboo Lab, especially when it comes to the mechanics. As with the standard version, K1 Max is probably the most compact model to date among enclosed 3D printers in the category. The enclosure is made of cast aluminum parts, two frames at the top and bottom, connected by four posts around the perimeter. The back wall and the lower part forming the electronics compartment are of ABS plastic. The sides and top cover are acrylic, and the door is made of glass. It closes tightly and is firmly fixed by magnets. There's only one drawback. The door opens slightly more than to 90 degrees, so you need to be more careful when working with the printer. Unlike K1, the Max version has a flat top cover also made of glass. It is not fixed and can be completely removed. All the transparent elements are made of gray tinted material, which gives a modern and balanced look to the device. The same high speed of printing is declared for Max, and it is primarily insured due to the sturdy frame. Secondly, the same fast Kinematics Core XY is applied. As with their other product line, Creality has implemented it here traditionally, with cylindrical guides, but this time with brass graphite bushings as bearings. Unlike ball bearings, the bushings make the mechanics much quieter. Two powerful stepper motors are responsible for moving the printing tool. Another factor making fast printing possible is the compact and lightweight print head. At the same time, it contains the peripheral control electronics, a dual-drive feeder, and extremely productive hot end the maximum flow rate of which can gain up to 32 cubic millimeters per second. A powerful fan is also set to cool the extruder on both sides. Furthermore, a longer nozzle is used, with the heating zone twice the size of the standard one. With the standard version, there was a problem with the feeder, such as skipping. At this point, it is fixed. The construction is the same, but the pressure mechanism is made from a different material with a tighter fixation. The gears in the operating mode are brought closer together. A textilite gasket has been added to prevent heating from the motor. We had no issues with feeding sufficient material whatsoever. Next, K1 Max is equipped with an efficient additional fan for the build area. The print quality largely depends on cooling of each layer, which helps to avoid model deformation. This is particularly important when dealing with overhangs. In such cases, the fan helps to solve the issues of elements tilted at a certain angle. There is also an extra fan on the rear side of the case for better air circulation inside the chamber. Unlike the previous model, the fan here is more powerful, 8015 instead of 6015, and comes with a carbon filter. Finally, the declared speed and acceleration are achieved thanks to the advanced software that is based on the popular Clipper firmware. It's capable of dampening the resonances arising from the movement of the print head at high speeds. This effect manifests itself in the form of so-called ringing on the surface of printed objects, that is, equally spaced, repeating lines that gradually disappear from the sharp corners of the model. 
For the first time among hobbyist 3D printers, the company has abandoned the cantilever bed in this series. The platform is now moved on three cylindrical guides by three screws that are synchronized by a timing belt in the electronics compartment. A system of four load cells is used for platform positioning control and construction of the surface curvature grid. Thanks to this solution, no user intervention is required for bed leveling. As for the bed cover, the printer has a removable steel plate with a special coating declared by the manufacturer as PEI, not with the usual granular, but matte surface. It provides great adhesion and works well with additional chemicals. The magnetic base is thick enough and holds the plate very well. It's easy to install thanks to special cutouts that conveniently rest against the screws. In the case of K1 Max, the bed is now heated by means of a 220-volt silicone heater, thanks to which heating is more even and faster in contrast to low-voltage heaters. The XY-axis printhead parking is carried out without any limit switches. The electronics detect movement to the extreme positions thanks to the sensorless homing function, which is based on modern stepper motor drivers, a nice touch with the above functionality of the device. However, as the machine can continue the task after a power outage, there seems to be no guarantee that it will resume printing from where it ended, which might lead to an error in parking positioning. The filament sensor is now mounted inside and it's different. Filament is fed more easily, with no clinging. However, time will show how it will work inside the chamber, especially when printing ABS at temperatures above 50 degrees Celsius. The printer uses a 4.3-inch touchscreen for control. The menu is conveniently organized in sections and is visually similar to that of the senior model of the previously mentioned brand. The touch system is responsive. Changing sections and selecting operations work smoothly. If necessary, one can set an automatic shutoff timer for the screen. Everything you need is arranged in a plain and intuitive way. However, this diversity of functions seems to lack some finer adjustments. For instance, you won't find here speed attunement or height adjustment of the first layer. K1 Max is supplied with a video camera for monitoring of the printing process. This can be done remotely through the cloud in the mobile app, in the Creality Print Slicer, or via the web interface by IP address. With the camera, it's also possible to create and download time-lapse videos via Creality Print. As can be seen by the number of functions, Creality tries to automate the printing process as much as possible. The following innovations have been added to accomplish this. The smart AI camera for K1 Max is capable of detecting printing issues, like stringing, similar to the Spaghetti Detective plugin for Octoprint, Abaco for Clipper, or some specialized cameras for 3D printing. We simulated the model peeling off the build plate, maybe not immediately, but after some time the printer paused the process, so it passed the test. This function must be separately enabled in the camera settings. In addition, there's an integrated LiDAR module that can also be activated in the camera settings. It consists of a camera and a laser and performs two functions. By measuring the dynamic distance to the print bed, it analyzes the surface and makes necessary adjustments to software. If the first layer is printed poorly, the module can cancel printing after analyzing the outcomes. Before printing begins, the print head has some extra work to do. This includes scanning the layout and the build surface, printing some test lines with the pressure compensation tuning, rescanning, and adjusting the parameters for printing. Next comes the first layer, its analysis, verification, and finally it's time to start the print job itself. All anything, but the whole procedure comes with heating and cooling for a certain operation and eventually it takes a little more than 10 minutes. There's no need to use this function for every task, but there is definitely no harm doing that when starting the process remotely. The manual states that the function does not work if the model is prepared in any third-party slicer. Now let's prepare the machine to work. With the Creality K1 series, there's no need to assemble the printer. All you have to do is perform the following steps. Install the screen. When dealing with it, you need to plug in the connector and secure the screen with a spike-to-groove connection. Install rubber dampers on the printer's feet. Screw the handle to the door. Attach the spool holder on the back wall and unscrew the three screws that hold the platform. After that, the printer can be plugged in. By the way, there's no voltage switch on the K1 Max model. Turn on the device and go through the entire preparation procedure following the prompts on the screen. The next step is to unscrew the screws, which we've already done. Then, make sure that nothing interferes with the movement of the platform and the print head in the build chamber. Connecting to Wi-Fi can be skipped, as the printer can still be used with a USB flash drive. If you decide to connect the machine to the network and the procedure is successful, the defined IP address will appear on the screen. Next, choose the time zone and connect to Creality Cloud if necessary. The device offers a self-check procedure, so you can enjoy the process of automatic adjustment. It starts with calibration of resonance compensation, with the printer making loud resonating sounds, which is normal. Then, it comes to bed mapping by 25 points. After that, it's time to feed filament. This is very easy thanks to the lever on the feeder of the direct extruder. 
it releases the thread from the gears pushing it. It's also possible to remove the tube from manual feeding instead of using the screen menu. To do this, remove the blue horseshoe part from the tube retainer. In preparation for printing, first the print head is placed in the center of the platform. Then the nozzle is cleaned in a pretty unconventional way, with cooling the hot end to a certain temperature. After that, the bed is probed on all four corners to construct the surface curvature grid. The nozzle is cleaned again by printing a line on the left side of the platform, and only then real 3D printing starts. If necessary, the bed leveling procedure can be disabled in the menu when starting a file for printing. In our opinion, there's no need to calibrate the bed for every project. This is relevant when changing the material, for example, from low temperature PLA to more demanding ABS, since the aluminum plate can bend differently at various temperatures. With provided G-code files and material from the kit, K1 Max coped well with the tasks set by the manufacturer. When compared to the basic version, models for the test are different, except for this Benchy, which took 18 minutes to print, instead of the usual 40 to 50 on other 3D printers, and only a couple minutes slower than Bamboo Lab. Here's a spool holder, if the printer needs to be put close to the wall. And a proprietary calibration cube from Creality. Next up is printing a PLA vase. It's a simple and easy way to check the mechanics of the entire Z-axis. Plus, there may be software issues with the print mode itself. Everything turned out fine, except for a small ripple on the walls which is clearly visible up close. Due to the peculiarities of the software and mechanics, slow print speeds may cause ripples on the part surface, but at speeds above 150 mm per second, it's hardly noticeable. Unfortunately, printing of vases is not about speed. With ABS, we decided to print some technical parts for assembly of 3D printers. This material is also not suitable for high speed since they affect its centerability. However, nothing prevents us from speeding up printing of the outer walls. As in previous cases, PETG is not a fan of elevated speed. But despite its fluidity and propensity for stringing, K1 provided quite acceptable results at high speeds. For printing with nylon, we created an individual profile in the slicer. The layer height was set to 0.12, with the speed lowered to 60 and all the fans turned off. Plus, we added a raft. As an adhesive, we used Creality's PVP-based glue stick and heated the chamber to 45 degrees Celsius before printing. There were also no problems with PACF. The printing parameters were the same, but we replaced the nozzle with a 0.6mm hardened one as recommended for composites. With TPU, there can be issues with feeding. It's difficult to push the thread through the filament sensor. To solve the problem, one can feed the material directly by suspending the spool above the printer with any rigid material for the sensor. At a speed of 60 mm per second, K1 Max coped well with medium-hard TPU. The manufacturer's proprietary slicer, Creality Print, offers a large number of settings, but over time you get used to it. The program has all the necessary material profiles. You can customize them or create new ones, like, for example, in the popular Cura Slicer. The main distinctive feature of Creality Print is a set of advanced tools, such as, for example, cloud functionality and the ability to create a 3D farm with several printers by sending a task to multiple devices at once. It's also possible to remotely manage the device from Creality Print. Plus, K1 Max is equipped with an Ethernet port in case the user has no Wi-Fi network available. Unlike, for example, Bamboo Lab, Creality does not require binding to account. The device will be available locally by IP address. It can be connected to Creality Cloud by scanning the QR code in the settings. If you use the IP address issued with the router, the printer can be controlled through its own web interface. The number of settings leaves much to be desired, but it's better than nothing at all. Now, let's move to conclusions. Regarding the stated print speed, the device is really impressively fast, although these are conditional figures. Printing with such movements of the head is possible only with a layer height not more than 0.1mm and hyper-PLA recommended by the manufacturer. For ordinary materials, it is necessary to increase the nozzle temperature and reduce the speed so that it does not affect the productivity of the hot end. K1 Max is far from silent, the fans are noisy, especially the auxiliary one dedicated for the build area. It continues to work up to a temperature threshold of 50 degrees Celsius. That is, after printing is finished, the noise continues for some time. However, there is a connector next to the fan so it can be turned off if you don't need to print PLA at high speed. On the plus side, K1 Max boasts an enjoyably compact design. It's scarcely possible to find a smaller 3D printer with a build volume like this. The manufacturer has also solved the previous problem with the feeder. We've experienced no issues at all. Finally, the model provides advanced functionality in the form of the AI LiDAR and camera. Although one can live without it, some may find it quite interesting. Generally, the printer has gained a lot of popularity in recent months due to its cost, capabilities, and advanced features, which is not surprising. We, on our part, really enjoyed working with it. This is Top 3D Shop with the in-depth review of the Creality K1 Max FDM printer. Subscribe to our channel, leave your comments below, and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. See you soon!